Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our open loop style boost control we're gonna be working with in our Haltech ESP software. So we're gonna be finding when we want to use the Haltech to control boost solenoid to increase the boost, we have a tremendous amount of flexibility and programming options. We're able to have a bunch of different compensation tables that can be enabled. We're gonna have our base duty cycle table. That's gonna be what we command out to the boost solenoid. And then we're gonna be able to do a whole bunch of different things as setting that table up. If we wanna do it boost by gear, boost by ground speed, maybe boost by gear and a trim pot, we're gonna have a whole bunch of flexibility. I'm gonna go walk you through some examples and how to implement it and some different strategies for the boost control. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be talking about using our open loop style boost control with our Haltech ESP software. We're gonna be finding we have a ton of flexibility in our open loop style control. And oftentimes with a race application, we really don't need to use closed loop boost control. We can get the boost that we want and have everything maintained and controlled properly in this open loop state. So let's jump in here and go in and configure some things so we can start to work with this open loop boost. So if we jump up into setup here, we're gonna be seeing under add remove functions, we have to add our boost control to our functions list. Typing down here boost, we're gonna be finding that the search result's gonna be returning boost control. We're gonna click this. It's gonna add it to our list here. And we're gonna be finding now that it has this warning message or error here because we have not assigned an output connection. So I'm gonna go into edit connection and I'm gonna be seeing I have a couple available connections here. Normally I'm gonna be using a DPO or a digital pulsed output whenever available. We do have these other options that we want, we could use but I'm going to be choosing, choosing DPO4 um, for my boost control specifically. So I'll click OK. The active state we're going to be leaving in low or grounding out. We're going to be finding we have the ability to also go high or send a 12 volt out. But in almost all situations, we're going to be going in and activa activating the boost solenoid and pulsing it with a low or ground output, just like a fuel injector. Now, looking into our options here, we have the output type, we have one solenoid, or we have the option for two solenoids. Now, one solenoid is going to be if you want to control it based on manifold pressure. If we go and select two solenoids, we can see then it's uh, changing the labeling of these outputs here. We have a boost increase solenoid and a boost decrease solenoid. This is going to be used if we have CO2-based control to our wastegate. So in most situations, we're not going to be using this. So I'm going to go over in this video just basing it on one solenoid. Now, if you have a sport front-wheel drive car or a very high horsepower turbocharged car, we have two boost solenoids installed. And you have one that's controlling the top port of the gate, which would be configured in this manner here as we're going in and setting everything up for open loop boost. We would have the second boost solenoid controlled from a generic output. I'm going to be walking you through that later on, what that's going to look like and how we can configure some things. So right now we'll stick with output type as one solenoid for most all situations where we want to control boost. We can see here we have some other options, enable arm switch, trim, and scramble boost. We're going to be finding the enable arm switch is going to be turning on or off the boost function. So if I click this here, I want to have a toggle switch that simply bypasses my boost control. We have to go and set the arming switch in here, and when the switch is completed the circuit on any of these inputs, it's going to go in and then turn the boost solenoid on and start to make the boost control work. Now this is going to be something that I normally never use, um, so I usually just leave this off. We can find we have a trim. It's going to have the same thing. We have to go in here and set up a connection. We're going to have to choose one of these inputs here. And when the switch is completed,